course, uh, the image is always given that the Africans themselves acquiesced to the process of slavery. But you'll find that in West Africa, there was a polity or a political entity that existed that guaranteed security right across West Africa, and that was the Songhai Empire. We saw the emergence of Nasiruddin in the 16th century. We saw Malik Si in the 16th century as well, and men like Abdul Qadr and uh, Cherno Suleiman Kaaba. These men who waged resistance in what is known as Futa Toro and Futa Jalon. And then you see that saw the emergence also of men like Muhammad El Amin and Mamadou Torre. Of course, we had Azinga in the southern areas of Africa as well that was fighting its resistance against European invasion. All the way up until through the 17th century, the emergence of men like like Sheikh Uthman ibn Fudio and Umar Futi, as well as Akhmadu Lobo. And then we had the courageous wars that took place in 1884 under the armies of uh, uh, Muhammad Ahmed ibn Abdullahi, as well as Muhammad Abdullahi al Hassan of Somalia. And then we had in 1903, finally, the wars that took place between the Sokoto Empire. So the Africans did not acquiesce to colonialism, nor did they acquiesce to slavery. They fought at every point. And in fact, when the slaves were landing in the Western Hemisphere, in Bahia, Brazil, you saw the emergence of jihad movements. You saw the emergence of men like Muhammadu Sambo, who led a two-month jihad in the Louisiana territories in North America. Men like Nat Turner and other men who refused to submit to slavery. The Haitian Revolution as well, men like Makantau. So the Africans never acquiesced to slavery. In fact, we can say this here, that the whole concept of freedom that the American 13 colonies had, they got that concept of freedom and liberty from the African resistance movement that took place in the Western Hemisphere. Now,